Hi, I'm Julia. And I'm James. We'll be your instructors for this introductory course on JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language created for the web. If you're familiar with using HTML and CSS to create web pages, JavaScript is the final piece that you'll need to really make your websites come to life. Back in 1995, when Brandon Ike created JavaScript, it was created to make it easier to add interactive and dynamic elements to websites. But today, JavaScript is used for all sorts of applications, from programming a robot with an Arduino to writing a game script in Unity. In fact, even some code editors are built with JavaScript. The point is, the opportunities with JavaScript are endless. In this course, you'll learn about the foundations of the JavaScript programming language, and along the way, you'll familiarize yourself with the tools used by JavaScript programmers. Finally, we want to make sure you get enough practice with the basics of the language. So between each section, you'll have access to the problem sets that reinforce the topics you just learned. Before we get started, let's take a quick detour to talk a little bit about JavaScript's history. JavaScript was created in just 10 days by Brendan Eich back in 1995 while Eich was working on Netscape Navigator. For those of you who don't know, Netscape Navigator was one of the Internet's first web browsers. Today you use browsers like Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Apple Safari, and Microsoft Edge to surf the web. Prior to Ike's creation of JavaScript, websites just existed as pages of HTML and CSS with the occasional plugin or Java applet. Wait, Java? Yes, well, at least at first. JavaScript, what this course is about, is totally different and not related to Java in any way. The fact is, JavaScript has had sort of a weird past when it comes to names. JavaScript was originally called LiveScript, but it was changed back to JavaScript as a marketing decision in order to piggyback off the popularity of Java at the time. As the language evolved, competing versions of the language emerged, so JavaScript was eventually taken to ECMA International so that an official standard for the language could be formed. Today, the language itself is still referred to as JavaScript, but recent versions are referenced by their ECMAScript version number, like ES5 or ES6. Even more recently, the standards body has transitioned to a year-based number to promote a more consistent release cycle. So we now have ES 2016, ES 2017, and so on. I know, it's confusing. All things considered, JavaScript has grown to be one of the most popular languages in the world and is considered one of the three foundational pillars of front-end web development. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get to Google Chrome's developer tools to access the JavaScript console. You're going to be using the console to run most of the code that you write in this course. If you're already using Google Chrome, then what you see in this video should match up with what you see on your computer. But if you're not using Google Chrome, then skip ahead to the next section for instructions on how to access developer tools in other browsers, and then come back to this video. Alright, now the first thing you'll need to do is to open up developer tools. You can do this by right-clicking on the page, and selecting Inspect. Once you have Developer Tools open, you can find the JavaScript console by clicking on the Console tab. If you like keyboard shortcuts, you can also use Command-Option-J on a Mac to open the console, or you can use Control-Shift-J on Windows. There's a really useful reference of keyboard shortcuts for Developer Tools linked below this video. Alright, so now that you have the JavaScript console open, let's write your first line of JavaScript code. One thing you could do is write your name. But just writing your name will actually result in an error, as you can see here. To be able to actually write your name in JavaScript without any error, you need to format your name as a data type called a string by putting it inside quotes. Why don't we try something else? Here's some code that creates an alert window that says, Hello Julia, how are you? And it pushes it to the browser. There you go. Now, writing code directly in your browser is something you can do to test out new code snippets where you're not really sure what they do. But it can actually get pretty annoying once you start writing larger and larger programs. For example, if you wanted to create two alerts instead of just one, it may seem simple at first, but each time you needed to go to the next line, you would have to type shift return instead of just the return key. This is going to get pretty annoying pretty fast. Eventually, in the next course, you'll learn about other ways to run JavaScript files. But for now, we recommend using a text editor like Atom or Sublime Text, and then pasting your code in the console once you're ready to test it.
Developer tools allow you to debug and test out your ideas directly in the browser. If you're familiar with HTML or CSS, you may have used developer tools to experiment with the style of a web page, but you can also use it with JavaScript. Developer tools are often used as a sandbox. In other words, a place to mess around with any code without any long-term consequences. You can use developer tools to debug problems you run into or to test a piece of code you just learned. If you open any website that uses JavaScript, the console will tell you if there are any warnings or errors on the page and will also display any output printed with console.log. Note that anytime you're using the console in this course, you might see some errors or warnings from the site you're visiting. That's okay. This is very common and will not affect the code that you write in this course. Before we move on to the JavaScript language itself, how about we recap some of the things you just learned? First, you learned that all major browsers come with built-in JavaScript engines. This allows browsers to run and execute JavaScript code. Next, you got practice using the JavaScript console. The JavaScript console allows you to print strings and execute lines of JavaScript code on the fly, right inside of your browser. And finally, you wrapped up with some exercises where you use JavaScript to add styles and animations to a web page. Hopefully you're beginning to see the power of JavaScript, and you're ready to dive in and explore the language. See you in the next lesson!